Hello, I'm Pete Gerlach. <clears throat> I'm the author of the nonprofit Break the Cycle website. That website is eight self-improvement lessons, which well over a thousand clients and students of mine have taught me since 1979. Lesson two is how to improve your communication effectiveness. Lesson four is how to improve your relationships. This video applies to both lessons, and I want to credit two sources of the information I'm about to summarize for you. Um, the first is a neurobiologist named Anne Moir, M-O-I-R-E, and her co-author David Jessel, who was a journalist. They wrote a book, a book some years ago called Brain Sex, which I highly recommend to you. It really should be titled Brain Gender, but that would sell fewer copies, perhaps. So they contributed to what I'm about to say to you. The other major contributor is a woman named Deborah Tannen, who wrote a book uh, called Men and Women in Conversation. I want to um, gladly take some of their ideas and put them together with my own. Um, in this video, which summarizes what are the differences between men and women uh, relative to how we all communicate. Um, this information probably explains the, quote, battle of the sexes, unquote, which from time to time uh, vexes both women and men, females and males. The point is this, all infants have a brain that is wired a certain way, and if the brain happens to be part of a male body, genetically, at a certain time, if the mother uh, supplies testosterone in just the right amount, in just the right time, the brain changes its wiring into a male brain. <clears throat> if that does not happen, the brain remains wired as a female. Um, so what? This is an interesting gee whiz fact, and it has some practical applications in your life and the other men and women in your life, boys and girls. The point that I've learned in, from these two sources is this. Male brains have certain preferences and they're different from typical female brains. I'm going to read this list uh, because I can't remember them all and I wouldn't do it justice. See if this rings any bells uh, for you as a male or a female um, and enjoy going, aha, or I thought so. Typical male brains prefer things, tangible things, power, they're interested in rank, first, second, third, who's best, uh, and status, who's better than someone else, who's the king, who's the serf. Typical female brains are interested in people in general and relationships, not things so much. There's a lot of exceptions to these, by the way. Don't take them too rigidly. Just look at the general patterns. Typical male brains um, like, seek, and enjoy facts, reason, rules, and logic. Does that sound right? Typical f female brains are more oriented towards feelings, emotions, senses, and meanings, major difference. Typical male brains enjoy competing, achieving, and winning. We males, at least many typical males, put high priority on those. Typical females, rather, enjoy harmony, relating with people, and sharing. Big difference, right? Typical male brains enjoy analyzing, intellectualizing, and figuring things out. 
typical female brains would rather intuit and know in the fullest sense of the word, as in sensing. They're less interested in logic than we males, we typical males. Typical male brains are known for being assertive and aggressive, or pushy, or controlling or manipulative. Typical female brains are more interested in cooperation and mutuality. Does that match your life experience? Typical male brains relish intellectual understanding. It's the same thing as figuring things out. This is why the universe is the way it is. This is why males and females act differently. <laughs> females enjoy empathizing more than intellectualizing because that has more to do with feelings. Male brains uh, as you well know, are interested, stereotypically at least, in sexual intercourse and interaction. And typical female brains are more interested in love, tenderness, and intimacy. And yes, you females enjoy intercourse also. Let me remind you, there's lots of variations between these categories and lots of exceptions. These are just generalities. They're still meaningful. Male brains are oriented towards companionship and action, doing things. Female brains are oriented towards closeness and being rather than doing. Many exceptions to that. Finally, typical male brains uh, prefer organizing and achieving. Female brains uh, enjoy personal and social dynamics. What's going on between her and her, him and him, them and them? Um, don't take this list too rigidly, but note the main theme of these differences. Males are different, male brains are different than female brains. Males may have, depending on a number of different factors, a female brain. It doesn't necessarily mean they're homosexual. It means they're more oriented towards female traits than male. There are, quote, masculine women that doesn't have anything to do with their physical features, but their brain, their emotions, their priorities are more masculine, as I've just differentiated. So what's the point? If you are in a conversation or a relationship that is stressing you, keep in mind you may be up against a different gender brain. If so, give up trying to persuade the other people, the other person, to see things or value things the way you do. What can really help in this regard is because we males and females differ, get to know and become an expert at recognizing what is a values conflict, because that's what I just named, a whole bunch of values differences. And when male and females differ on values, know how to spot that and master it. See the video that has to do with how to manage values conflicts. Also, invest some time in the videos for Lesson 2, Communication Effectiveness, and Lesson 4, Improving Your Relationships. I hope you find this intriguing and interesting. Thanks for your time.